All right, welcome back everyone to another video. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up the WebSocket module for our Nest.js application. Remember, this is the same Nest.js repository. We're not creating a new application. It's the same exact project. Just wanted to throw that out there. And also, if you wanted to reference the docs on your own, uh, you can go over to the official Nest.js documentation website. And there's a section on the left side called WebSockets. And this is pretty much what we're going to be basing everything off of. Okay, lots of helpful information here. Anyways, so I'm going to go into my terminal. We're going to install the Nest.js WebSocket package, as well as the Nest.js platform socket IO package. Okay, so this is just going to allow us to set up the WebSocket. Okay, and essentially everything is built upon the socket IO server. If you're not familiar with socket IO, it's a very, very very popular library that is used to build uh, real-time applications. And you can actually use it to set up your own WebSocket server. It can also use the client, Socket.io client, to connect to that Socket.io server. Okay. Um, if you don't want to use Socket.io, they actually, I think they do have documentation on how to set up your own raw uh, WebSocket server. So it's totally up to you on how you want to do it. But we're, we're just going to use Socket.io for now, okay? So let's go ahead and install nest.js web sockets and then at nest.js platform socket io okay so i'm using yarn so it should install those two packages cool all right so now that we have the packages installed we can go ahead and start setting up our module so i'm going to go inside my code base so you can see right now we're in our guild controller, but so I'm going to go inside my project right now and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called WebSocket. And inside this folder, this is where we're going to basically create the module. So I'm going to create a module called WebSocket.module.ts. And I mean, I could have actually just used the NestJS uh, CLI tool, but I'll just manually create it. It doesn't really matter. So let me go ahead and import module from NestJS common. And let me go ahead and we're going to have a provider in just a second, but I'll leave this as an empty array for now. We're going to go ahead and create a events, or not events module. Sorry, I'm looking at the doc. I meant to call this WebSocket module. Okay. And before we do anything else, let's make sure we import the module inside app.module.ts. So that way it's uh, set up. Perfect. All right, so what we can do now is we can go ahead and create the actual uh, the actual WebSocket class that will take care of handling events, add that as a provider, and then that will be registered. And you'll see in the logs, once we do that, it will actually show you that those messages are going to be, are, are going to start being subscribed. And I'll show you how we can, uh, how we can test this out. So inside the WebSocket, I'll go ahead and just create a new file, and I'll call this uh, socket.ts. Okay, and what we want to do inside this socket.ts file is we can actually create a class and this class can have multiple different functions or I should call it methods that can handle different types of, or not different types, different messages, right? Because you might have many different messages that you might want to, that you may want to do. Okay, so let's say for example, if you wanted to, have a message. So let's say for example, inside the socket.ts file, we're gonna go ahead and create a class called uh, WebSocket. I keep using events gateway because that's what the example shows, but we'll just call this WebSocket, WebSocket uh, handler. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll use the WebSocket gateway decorator. This is what you gotta do in order for this actually work now let's see if there's anything that has changed nope okay that's fine so what's next is we gotta go ahead and actually uh start by using the subscribe message decorator and we gotta specify the messages that we want to actually subscribe to so i'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to let's just call this uh let's call this guilds for now and we'll just call this guilds handler. And I'm gonna use the message body decorator. 
So this is going to give you the actual payload that is being sent to this uh, handler. So any data that is being sent is going to be stored inside this data parameter. Now, if I go ahead and save, if I look in the logs, we should be able to see, let's see. All right, so now let's go ahead and take this WebSocket handler. Let's add this as a provider right over here. And we should be able to see, you can see right over here, let me highlight this. WebSocket handler subscribe to the guild's message. Okay, so what we just did was we set up a gateway. Okay, so this pretty this this gateway can pretty much start to subscribe to these guilds message, right? So let's say for example, if we have a bunch of connections uh, coming in, right? Those connections, like those those clients, we can call them, can start to send uh, messages uh, under the guilds name. Okay, and for those messages that we're sending to the guilds, uh, we can pass in whatever data that we want. So in order to test this out, um, I'm going to go ahead and use Postman uh, because Postman actually has a feature that allows you to test WebSocket requests. So I would highly recommend you download Postman. Okay, it's free. So I'm going to go ahead and select WebSocket requests. I'm going to go ahead and change this from raw to socket.io because we are using socket.io. And I'm going to enter the local host and the port. So port 3000. When I go ahead and click connect, you'll notice, uh, let's see what's going on. Oh, I typed HTTPS. It's supposed to be HTTP. Okay, so there you go. You can see that I was able to connect successfully to the WebSocket server. Now let's actually send a message to this handler, this guilds handler. And how do we do that? Well, remember, we're subscribing to the guilds message. So this guilds event, right, we can start sending messages to this guilds event right over here because we're subscribing to it so let's go ahead and do that so inside postman right over here where it says event name by default it's message but i'm going to change this to guilds and over here we can actually send a message so this message that we write inside here is going to just be populated inside this data uh, this data parameter which the, the type is any but it could be literally anything you want you can actually add like some kind of data transfer uh, object if you want to Let's go ahead and send text and I'll just say hello world. And you'll, you'll see that we're gonna log it in just a second. Okay. You can see that it says hello world. Okay, we can also set acknowledgement too, I think. Um I'm not sure if that really does much right now. But we can also send JSON if we want to. Let's just let's say for example, we're trying to send uh like like a prefix, for example. Let's do that. You're going to see it's going to log it in the console. So anything that I send to this uh, to this uh, message over here, it's going to be uh, consumed by the WebSocket. Okay. Now, this isn't exactly what we're going to be doing uh, when we update the guild prefix because we're actually supposed to be emitting events to the, uh, to the client itself, which is going to be our Discord bot. Okay. This is actually, ha this is actually the other way around. If we were to actually send messages from the bot to the server, then we would actually need this uh, handler, which is why I'm showing you all how to do this right now. So in case you might need to do this at some point, you'll know how to do it. So if your bot, for example, has some kind of event uh, that, that that's going on, that can only be handled on the bot side, but you need to do something on the Nest.js application, then you'll go ahead and send a message from the Discord bot application to the Nest.js application using the WebSocket, using the Socket.io client. So hopefully this makes sense. I'm going to end the video right over here just because I want to move on to the next episode where I'm going to show you how we can actually manually send events in our Nest.js application to our connections. So I'm going to end it right over here so that way we can have this video just only be how to set up a WebSocket gateway so that the Nest.js server can actually receive events. Okay, next episode we're going to actually emit events from our Nest.js application. And then in the episode after that, I'm going to show you how we can install Socket.io client on our Discord bot and how we can use that to uh, consume events that are being sent from the Nest.js WebSocket server. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.